What's up YouTube, welcome to a new video. What if I told you that you can make $100,000 just by doing science? How? Through the National Science Foundation Graduate Research Fellowship Program, or the NSF GRFP for short. So the NSF GRFP is a program that awards fellowships to uh, graduate students who are in the STEM fields. So if you're uh, in science, technology, engineering, or mathematics, and even social sciences, even though yes, it's traditionally not part of the STEM, uh, you can uh, be a fellow. So the reason the NSF has this fellowship is because they want to advance science in the country and they want to uh, benefit from the results that come out of this science. And the NSF usually boasts that about 42 uh, Nobel laureates have won this award. So what kind of benefits are we talking about here? Well, if you win the award, if you're a fellow, then you are paid $34,000 every year for three years and they cover $12,000 of your tuition and fees uh, to your university. So typically, if you're a graduate student, in order to get that money, to get that stipend, you have to teach. You have to become a TA, a teaching assistant, or a GSI. Um, so, but if you have this fellowship, then you actually don't have to teach because you're funded by the National Science Foundation. So if you're in a field like chemistry, geology, uh, physics, astronomy, um, computer science, uh, even social science, you're allowed to apply, and this year they're focusing on three main uh, areas, which are artificial intelligence, um, computationally intensive research, and the last one is quantum information. There's also uh, a few research projects that are not allowed, so anything that's health-related, so like trying to have a project that has to do with uh, epidemiology or, um, say, a cure for a certain disease, um, that's not allowed, and there are projects that have to do with clinical research, and those are also not allowed. Okay, so what does the application consist of? Well, basically you have a personal statement, and then a research statement, your transcripts, and then your letters of recommendation. So let's start with that first one, which is the personal statement. Now, technically it's called the Personal Relevant Background and Future Goals Statement. And it's basically self-explanatory. What you wanna do in this statement is you wanna talk about your story, how you came to the field that you're in. So what brought you uh, to the research field? Why are you interested in this particular project? All right. So you have to tell your story in that statement. Then there's the relevant background part of that statement where you have to talk about your experiences. I mean, okay, in, in undergrad, what did you do? In grad school, in your first year, what did you do? Did you do a research project or did you uh, maybe work in a professional setting, in an industrial setting? So you have to talk about your experience and uh, talk about what exactly did you do? What was the project? What were the methods that you used? What was the goal of the project? Did you reach that goal? All those questions you have to talk about in the statement. And then you have to talk about your future goals. So once you're done with your uh, graduate program, you have your master's, you have your PhD, uh, you're a fellow, what are you going to do after um, you graduate? So are you going to go, for example, become a professor and start educating, doing research, uh, what outreach plans do you have? A few questions to keep in mind when you're writing this statement is what brought you into this field? What really sparked your interest? And that goes usually in your uh, in the first page where you're talking about your story and how you came to love the field. Another question you want to answer is how do you show that you take initiative? How do you show that you're a problem solver? So that was the personal statement and keep in mind it's three pages. Now we move on to the research statement. And this is a two-page statement where you're going to talk about your project, your proposal. So you're gonna be writing about what your project is, uh, what are you gonna be working on, what methods you're gonna use, how you're gonna assess your project, uh, whether it's gonna fail or succeed, what tests you have to figure that out. You also have to talk about where your project is gonna take you. So after you're done with the project, what's the next step? What's the big goal uh, for that project? And as you're writing all this, keep in mind that you have to address it to a non-specialist. So for example, if I'm doing particle physics, and I'm writing my uh, proposal, someone in condensed matter may be reading my uh, application, so I have to write the statement that is towards someone who may be in the same field, but not in the same subfield. So I wanna make sure that it's accessible to different people who are reading my application. So that means don't use any jargon. And lastly, when you're writing the statement, make sure you specify exactly what your role in the whole project is gonna be. So if you're doing maybe a group project, Make sure that you talk about what you're gonna do exactly. So then we have transcripts. If you're an undergrad, then you only need your undergrad transcript. But if you're in graduate school, then they require both transcripts. So you need your undergrad and your graduate 
uh, transcripts. Then finally, we have the letters of recommendation. And this is a very important part of the application. Um, two is the minimum. Three is strongly recommended. And you can uh, put up to five names, I think, in the application, but they only read the first three. So make sure you diversify your letters of rec, make sure someone speaks about your research, someone else speaks about maybe your classwork, your outreach initiatives, stuff like that. So now you have your application, you submitted your application, now it's time for it to be assessed. So how does the NSF assess your application? Well, basically they look for two main things. The first is intellectual merit, and the second one is called broader impact. So let's start with that first one, intellectual merit. What this is, is basically they're judging you on your grades, your presentations, uh, any publications that you had, your awards that you've won, the research experience that you have, maybe some work experience, um, whether you uh, take the initiative, go find new questions, are you a good problem solver? So all of that goes under intellectual merit. The other criteria is broader impacts. And from the name, uh, it suggests that it has to do with the community around you. You know, how, do you, how does your science and how do you personally affect the community around you and how do you bring out that science to them. So if you've done some outreach, um, that would be something that, that goes under broader impacts. If you inspire people to come into science in your particular field, uh, that counts as broader impacts. So you have to talk about how your particular project can affect the community around you. So if it has practical applications, make sure you say that in your statement. Okay, so now that we spoke about the uh, fellowship, who can actually apply to it? Well, first you have to be a US citizen or a national or permanent resident. So you must also be attending a U.S. institution. So if you're a U.S. citizen, but you're attending a university outside of the United States, then you're not eligible to apply. So you also must be applying to a PhD or a master's program. So if you're a junior and undergrad who is uh, still has maybe one more year of undergrad, then you can't apply to the fellowship. You must be applying to graduate school. So you have to be a senior or your final year. Now, if you're in grad school, then uh, you can only apply in your first and second years. If you already have a PhD or a master's, then you don't qualify to apply. Uh, but if you got your master's through a joint bachelor's master's program, then you can apply. And lastly, if you've received the award before, then you're not allowed to apply again, even if you declined the first time. So if you're an undergrad, then you will apply your senior year. And then uh, if you get it, then congratulations. But if you don't, then once in your, you're in grad school, you can apply again. If you're a graduate student, then you can only apply once, and that's either in your first year or your second year. If you're a third year grad student, then you can apply. So what are some tips and tricks to get you started and to make sure you have a good application? Well, first, is start early. And it's funny because I'm telling you to start early, and here I am making a video about the NSF, and I still haven't started my application. So. So another tip is to make sure you have the right deadline. So different uh, fields have different deadlines. Here's a list of all the deadlines. Make sure you have the right one. Another tip is to make sure you have the right formatting or else your, uh, your application will be disqualified. So if you have the wrong font, the wrong font size, the spacing, the page number, all of that, uh, you have to get it right or else they won't read your application. Another tip is to diversify your letters of rec. So I think I already mentioned that. And lastly, if you search the internet, you will find old uh, applications. So statements like personal statements and research statements of people who have actually won the award. So go and read those and make sure uh, you understand the structure of their statements and how you can write in the same structure. Don't try to mimic the, the style. The style is yours but mimic the structure. And with that, I wish you good luck if you're applying. If not, please wish me good luck because I'll be applying this year. And as always, if you like the video, share it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.